So hey guys, welcome to our channel Fiction Domain. And also welcome to the another amazing story on what if Naruto gained the power of all Zanpakuto. What if Naruto found his Zanpakuto in a stone in the Hajoku well hiding from a mob? What if the Zanpakuto Naruto found gives him the power of all Zanpakuto, and the Hajoku gives him power beyond the reach of mortals, there will be Ak. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. It is five years after the attack of Kai Ubi, and five-year-old Naruto who got kicked out of the orphanage at age three, had to live in the streets, until the Hokage gave him his own place. The Shinobi Council minus the Ichiha clan, tried their best to protect him, but they weren't always successful, and Naruto was running from a mob, and was very fast for a kid his age. Naruto ran into an old temple that had not been used for centuries, and only the Hokage knows about the temple, after he runs into the temple to hide, the mob runs by looking for him so they can try and kill him, Naruto sighs in relief, and feels a power reaching out to him. Naruto. The soothing female voice whispers in his head, Naruto is walking in the temple, and enters a large altar room with a sword and a stone and small orb on the stone. On the stone was a stone tablet, and it said only the one pure of heart and soul and true descendant of the original owner of the sword and orb named Aizen Yuzumaki, can wield these weapons. A sword and a small orb he says quietly, Naruto. The voice whispers again, and Naruto looks around the room to find out where the voice is coming from. I'm here. Says Naruto, take the small orb called the Hijoku into your left hand, and take the sword known as the Zanpakuto out of the stone, and into your right hand says the voice, Naruto walks to the sword and small orb and does so, when he does this, Naruto feels warmth of power flow into him from both the sword and small orb, and gets pulled into his subconscious. Naruto wakes up in his subconscious and see a giant cage door with a seal on it, he gets up and walks toward it, and sees a face inside. Hello Naruto. Says the being, who and what are you? Asks Naruto, I am what you mortals call Kaiubi, but my real name is Kurumi. Says Kaiubi, so you're a woman. Ask a shock Naruto, yes young one, I am female and I will tell you everything that happened and why it happened. Says Kurumi, and she does so and Naruto is shocked and angry because he was never told that he was the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. Can you tell me who my parents are Kurumi-chan? Asks Naruto, and Kurumi blushes at the Chan part added to her name, yes Naruto-kun, you father is the fourth Hokage Minato Namikas, and your mother is Kashina Yuzumaki, who was my host before you. She says, and Naruto is very shocked at this, he now knows that he is the son of the fourth Hokage, and wanted to ask Suratobi about it later, what was my mother like? Ask Naruto, Kurumi smiles and says your mother was a mistress in Zanjutsu or sword play, and was a Anbu captain. Dot. Naruto begins to cry, why didn't Jiji tell me? Cried Naruto, and another voice says it was for your safety as the son of the fourth Hokage and Red Death. Naruto looks back and sees an angelic figure standing before him, who are you? Ask Naruto, the woman smiles warmly and says I am the small orb you picked up Naruto, I am known as Hijoku. Then Naruto is in shock, he turns to Kurumi, but what he saw made him blush, Kurumi in human form, she had long red hair with pointed ears, a heart-shaped face and a very beautiful red kimono, and the subconscious changes and Naruto looks around and sees what looks like heaven, and sees lots of people standing before him. They are the spirits of the sword called Zanpakuto. And Naruto is surprised at this, and the woman in white hair says yes, we are the Zanpakuto spirits that live in the sword you picked up. And now Naruto then asks, what are your names? They introduce themselves and Naruto looks at the spirits with white hollow like armor, how come you guys have white armor on ask Naruto, we are special Zanpakuto for a ranker. The panther like hollow said, what's in a ranker ask Naruto, and a ranker is a hollow trying to gain the power of a soul reaper, by removing its mask. Oh said Naruto understanding, we are a different kind of release form we call Resurrection in a returning form. The humanoid shark hollow finishes. Naruto-kun, they have seen your memories and everything that has happened, and they are furious at what those innocent civilians have done to you. Said Kurumi, oh we are so angry we want to bring that village to the ground. Said Kurumi, we are very impressed with the endurance you put up to live with it. Said Zanjetsu, when you wake up Naruto, you will be mature, calm, deadly, smart and respectful to those who are respectful to you said Hijoku, and Naruto nods in understanding. Naruto wakes up to see the Zanpakuto is on his waist, and the Hijoku is in his chest, he would have to ask Hijoku about that later. He goes to Hokage Tower and he walks up to the secretary, and she tells him to get lost, and Naruto lets out killing intent, and she gets scared and lets him in, he walks in, and the Sandame, here is in Suratobi looks up and sees Naruto with a sword on his hip. And a small orb in his chest and asks Naruto, how come you have a sword at your waist and a small orb in your chest? Dot. The answer to that Jiji is that I was Chaz by the civilians again, and this time I ran and hid in an old temple that had the sword and small orb. 
Naruto answers, and now Sarutobi is shocked at this and says Naruto, you found the lost temple of Aizen Uzumaki. And Naruto then says, Aizen Uzumaki, I saw that name on a stone tablet on the stone the sword was in. And Hiruzen then asks do you remember what the stone tablet said? It said only the one pure of heart and soul and true descendant of the original owner of the sword and orb named Aizen Uzumaki can wield these weapons. And after I read the tablet, I heard a voice telling me to take the sword and orb. Naruto says. Whose voice did it belong to? Asks Sarutobi, it belonged to Kurumi-chan or to you guys Kaiubi. Answers and Hiruzen almost has a heart attack and says Naruto, don't listen to it, the Kaiubi is evil. You are wrong Jiji, Kurumi-chan is not evil, and Kurumi-chan is a she, and the answer why she attacked was because of madara Cha. Naruto says calmly, and Hiruzen strokes his beard and says I find that hard to believe my boy. And Naruto asks if he could use the orb to see what happened in the past to show Sirutobi, and Sirutobi says yes, and they use the orb to see the past, and Sirutobi says I believe you now Naruto, and let's keep this SS rank secret. And as Hokage the sword and orb are your property, and if anyone says otherwise they can get out of the village, and as proof that this is unchangable, I will have a paper signed by you and myself with the seal of the fire daimyo. Sirutobi declares. Naruto smiles at that and then remembers something, Jiji, I know about my parents from Kurumi-chan, and she told me everything, so my question is why would you keep my heritage away from me? Ask Naruto, Saratobi is shocked that Naruto knows about his parents and says sadly, I'm sorry Naruto, it was because your parents had lots of enemies outside of the village, and I didn't want assassination attempts on you to occur, but there had been assassination attempts on you by the civilians and some shinobi from this village, but I punished them for it. The shinobi council minus the Ichiha clan have done their best to protect you, and since you now know I will need to have you keep it a secret until the time comes. Naruto now knows why Sirutobi hid it from him, alright Jiji, for your sake I'll keep it a secret until the time comes. Naruto says. Sirutobi smiles, oh and Naruto, I would like to train you so you can become a shinobi, because I know the ninja academy will not accept you. But be careful to not use up your chakra. And Naruto hears Hajoku Naruto-kun, tell him that the small orb negates it, so that you chakra never runs out ever so you can use jutsu, and what I will teach you is known as keto. Dot. Naruto smirks and says, Jiji the small orb is called the Hajoku, and she told me that she negates chakra loss, and gave me a new type of energy called Riatsu, and only I can use Riatsu, so I will be able to use any kind of jutsu, whenever I want, and never lose chakra, and there is one more thing. Hijoku will be teaching me a new type of technique that only requires Riatsu called Kido. And here's the real kicker, I will be having infinite power and never run out. Dot. Saratobi is beyond shocked and says, Naruto, do you know what you have discovered, you have an item that prevents you from losing power at all, and now I will have the Uzumaki clan be an official Konoha clan, and be one of the noble clans like the Ichiha and the Hyuga clans, and because the Uzumaki clan helped discover Konoha. And at the next council meeting, I will declare that the Uzumaki clan will now be a noble, and I will name them the three noble clans, and you are the clan head of the Uzumaki clan, and this will be unchangeable as well with the signatures of you and myself, along with the seal of the fire daimyo. And now Naruto is shocked because Saratobi turned the Uzumaki clan into a noble clan. Oh and by the way, I'll place you under the craw, however you have the power to decide the brides you will marry, and you will be wed at the age of 18. Naruto is glad Saratobi declared this, and now he can choose as many brides as he wants. Thank you Jiji, I'll be going now. Said Naruto and he is about to leave. One more thing Naruto, you will have your clan's money from their vault in the bank, and you are in charge of your clan's money. And Naruto is really happy that Saratobi gave the Uzumaki clan their wealth back, then Saratobi says oh and Naruto, your mother is still alive. And Naruto is surprised at that, Jiji, is Kasan still in the village. Sirutobi sadly says, no, she is not in the village anymore. So she did abandon me. Says Naruto with tears in his eyes, and Sirutobi then gets up and hugs him and speaks soothingly to him, no Naruto, she was forced to she loved you, she is now out there waiting to come face to face with you. Dot. Naruto is happy that his mom loved him, and Naruto says oh yeah, Jiji I want to use the power of the Hijoku to make you have more power than the council, and you will have so much power that no one can disobey your rule. And Saratobi smiles and says I would appreciate that Naruto. And with that Naruto empowers Saratobi and now Saratobi is much braver, stronger, smarter, wiser and confident. There you go Jiji, now the civilian nor elder councils can never overpower you. Said Naruto with a victorious smirk on his face, and Saratobi matches it. I feel much better now Naruto, good night my boy. Naruto walks home and notices Kumo Shinobi with a bag with muffling coming from it, Naruto gets furious and shouts hey, let Hinata Hayuga go. The Kumo Nin look at him and are shocked that a civilian kid is standing up to the Kumo Shinobi, and what are you gonna do if we say no, now who are you boy? Asked the Kumo Nin with a sneer. 
I am Naruto Uzumaki, the head of the Uzumaki clan. And their eyes widen at the clan name. How, the Uzumaki clan was wiped out, I guess there are still living members of the clan. And now Naruto knows that there are more Uzumaki clan members, and now he wanted to find the remaining Uzumakis in the elemental nations. You will now suffer for kidnapping Hinata Hayuga from her clan, now feel the power of the Uzumaki clan. Declares Naruto, Reap, Kazushini chants Naruto, and his sword transforms into a chain scythe with two blades on both side going different directions. The Kumonin are scared at the weapon in his hands, and Naruto spins the chain scythe and throws the end at the Kumonin, and the chain scythe reverts back to sword form, and Hiashi runs out and sees Naruto standing over the bodies of the Kumonin, and Naruto feels something weird in his stomach, he then goes to a nearby bush and vomits, you okay Naruto? Ask Hiashi, my first kill answered Naruto, and Hiashi unties the bag, and Hinata comes out of the bag and hugs her father for dear life and cries. It's alright Hinata, daddy's got you, this young man saved you. And she looks and sees Naruto and blushes, dad, is that boy an angel? Hiashi smiles at that because Hinata has fallen in love with this boy, what is your name? Asked Hinata, I am Naruto Uzumaki, the head of the Uzumaki clan. Dot. The Ashi's eyes widen at that and asks, did the Hokage make you the head of the Uzumaki clan and make it a noble clan like the Hayuga and Uchiha clans? Yup. Says Naruto, I have decided to put Hinata in arranged marriage with you Naruto if you want. Naruto and Hinata both blush at this, Hiashi then says, I will let you two get to know each other before you decide, if you two like each other, then you can talk to me if you want to accept the marriage offer. Naruto smiles and says I like that idea. Dot. After that night, Naruto goes to Hiruzen and receives training from him, and also has training from his Zanpakuto spirits, even the Hijoku. And after 11 years, Naruto is now beyond cage level shinobi, Naruto mastered his Zanpakuto, Kido, and H-O-L-L-O-W-F-I-C-A-T-I-O and Naruto's hollow mask is a fox call, and he mastered all the jutsu in the world, because Saratobi discovered that Naruto was no ordinary Uzumaki, but he possessed all the bloodline that exist and don't exist in the shinobi world. Saratobi told Naruto that the Uzumaki clan possessed multiple Keke Jinkais, and only five Uzumakis wielded every single bloodline, even the Byakugan, Sharingan and Rinnegan, and were called the Uzumaki gods, and said that Naruto is the sixth, and that his parents would be so proud. Naruto is also creating new jutsu for the Chakra Infity and Bloodline Limit, and had mastered all the Keke Genkai, and his Sharingan is now the Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, remember Madara Chiha's Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, when he faced Hashirama Senju. Naruto also learned that two of the Sanin are his godparents, Jiraiya and Tsunade. And Naruto stopped calling the Hokage Jiji, and now calls him Saratobi Sensei and Hokage Zama, Naruto's appearance also changed, he now had red hair because of all the training with Kurumi, and over the years, all the females and Pakuto spirits have fallen in love with Naruto, he stood at an impressive 5'7 in height. He wore dazzling white robes with the orange whirlpool on the back his Zanpakuto is on his left hip and wore a red windflower slick scarf around his neck, Naruto's hair grew longer over the 11 years as it now stopped in the middle of his back and he wore a green kensuken in his hair that he decided that every member of the Uzumaki clan should wear it. Naruto's behavior changed as well, Naruto had an impassive face, similar to Bayakuya's face, and the whisker marks vanished, making him look like a god on earth to the women. He was never arrogant at all. He gave respect to those who give him respect, Naruto is glad that nobody would attack him anymore, because Saratobi announced that the Uzumaki clan is now a noble clan, under Kra, and that if anyone attacked Naruto like they always did because he had Kurumi sealed inside him while Naruto was the head of the clan, they would be executed by Naruto himself. But to Saratobi, the power that Naruto possessed was so powerful, he knew he could never let Danzo, the elder council nor the civilian council, not even Orochimaru get their hands on him, so he did what no cage had ever done before, he made Naruto, his right-hand man. The day was the time where the exams for becoming a genin, and Naruto was asked by Hiruzen to take the exams, as Naruto enters the shinobi academy, and everyone sees him and the girls minus Sakura blush at the side of him, and Naruto walks up to Aruka and gives him a note from the Hokage, Aruka takes the note and reads it, then nods. Class, we're going to have a new student taking the exams to become a shinobi. Says Aruka, and everyone groans at that, why don't you introduce yourself? Says Aruka, and Naruto nods, I am Naruto Uzumaki, the head of the Uzumaki clan. Says Naruto, everyone is shocked, why does Naruto Baka get to take the exams early, and that we had to go through the entire year? Shriek Sakura, Sakura, show him respect. Score Naruka, why Aruka Sensei, he's probably from a looser clan, and will never match Sasu Kun because Sasu Kun's from the Ichiha clan. Said Sakura arrogantly, Sakura, you're wrong, because Naruto is from a noble clan called the Uzumaki clan. Every Anya eyes widened when they heard noble clan. How can he be a noble, he isn't like Sasu Kun. 
Shri Sakura in denial, Hokage-sama decreed that the Uzumaki clan would be a noble clan woman. Said Naruto calmly, and Sakura glares at him, and to her shock, Naruto is completely unaffected by her glare, whatever, you'll never be as good as Sasuke-kun. Said an arrogant Sakura. That arrogant mouth of yours is going to be the death of you. Said Naruto annoyed, everyone is in shock at what Naruto just said, and Sakura charges and tries to punch him for embarrassing her, but Naruto raises his hand and catches the punch, and Sakura is in shock, try to punch me again, and it'll be the last thing you'll do. Said Naruto angrily and threateningly, and at this Sakura gulps, am I clear said Naruto with a smile that promises death, yes, I am giving him Captain Anahana's smile of death, and Sakura is sweating like crazy, because she is terrified at the threat. I'm skipping the entire academy day because I'm too lazy to do so. After the day of the exams to become genin, Naruto became a genin very, very easily. Naruto is walking to Hokage Tower when he spots Mizuki trying to sneak into the Hokage's office, Naruto instantly knew what Mizuki was after, and so he decided to speak to the Hokage and let Mizuki get arrested, and it worked very well because Naruto intercepted Mizuki by knocking him out. Saratobi was happy that Naruto was able to bring justice to the village by catching a traitor, so Saratobi considered this to be an unofficial air rank mission. And after that, Naruto went to the classroom and waited for Iruka, as the rest of the students who passed come into the classroom, Sakura and Ino got in by forcing each other into the room through the slide door, and they both got in, ha. Huh. I won said Ino, no way I did. Argued Sakura, as they walked over to the desk that Sasuke was at, and then Sakura shrieks, Naruto Baka, I want to sit next to Sasuke-kun, now move or I'll beat you away. And then, Naruto calmly says with a smile. Sakura I will not tolerate such bad behavior from you, and we don't want to start a fight with the other graduates in the room and have them hospitalized, am I clear? And everyone except Hinata and Ino shiver at that, and Sakura is sweating like crazy, and she nods quickly and just sits right down, and Aruka walks in and speaks, alright, now that you are here, I will be assigning the teams, team 1. Skipping to team 7. Team 7 will be Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno, and Sai, and your sensei will be Kakashi Haddock. And Sakura is now rubbing it in Ino's face that she was in Sasuke's team. The mate will be Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inuzuka and Shino Aburam, and your sensei will be Kurina Yuhi. Hinata is sad that Naruto wasn't on her team, and Naruto puts a hand on her shoulder and smiles warmly at her, and she blushes, she and Naruto have gotten very close in their relationship, she knows that Naruto is under craw. The both of them fell in love, and they told Hiashi that they agree to the arranged marriage. Team 9 is still not open, now Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamarunara and Choji Akamichi, and your sensei will be Asuma Suratobi. Ino is sad because Naruto wasn't on her team, however Naruto turns to her and smiles warmly like he did with Hinata, and she blushes, she fell in love with Naruto when he saved her from a gang of bullies, and was always drawn to him because he comforted her after the bullies were taken care of, and Ino asks her father if she can be in an arranged marriage with Naruto. And Inoichi tells Ino that Naruto is under Kra, and he accepts it. Sakura notices that Naruto isn't on a team and asks, Iruka sensei why isn't Naruto Baka on a team? That is a good question Sakura, because Naruto got the class of odd number of students, he will be a one-man squad member, and he will be having two senseis instead of one, and also he will be helping teams 8 and 10 on C to higher rank missions when it gets to that. And as for his rank he will be at the rank of Takubetsu Genin by orders of the Hokage. Said Aruka, Hinata and Ino are very happy that Naruto was going to help them on missions, Sasuke and Sakura are angry that Naruto got a better rank than they did. As for his senseis, they are Anko Midarashi and Yuga Yuzuki, and his team number is 11. As the sensei for teams 1 to 6 pick up their students, teams 7 to 11 are still in the room. And then Asuma, Kurinai, Anko and Yuga appear, teammate is with me. Says Kurinai, she blushed at the sight of Naruto and then leaves with her students, team 10 is with me. Said Asuma and they leave, which of you is Naruto Uzumaki? Asks Yugao, and Naruto stands then walks up to them, that would be me. He says to them, they get a good look at Naruto, and both Anko and Yugao have blushes on their faces, they know Naruto is under Kra, so they are fine with sharing Naruto, and then they leave with Naruto, and at the dango shop. Alright, now that we are here, we will now introduce ourselves. Said Yugao, I'll go first, I am Anko Midarashi, I like interrogation, Dango and my friends, I dislike perverts, idiots, spoiled brats, and people who don't see the difference between the kunai and the scroll it's in, my hobbies are training, hanging out with my friends and eating dangos. My plans for the future are to find my dream man and settle down to have a family. Says Anko, I am Yugao Yuzuki, I like my friends and training, I have the same dislikes as Anko, my hobbies are training and hanging out with my friends, my plans for the future are to have a family with the man of my dreams and train the younger generation to become great shinobi. Says Yugao. 
I am Naruto Uzumaki, I like Raymond, training, learning and creating new jutsu, my friends, my girlfriends and my sword, I really dislike perverts, idiots, arrogance, the Ichiha clan, the civilian council, the elder council, spoiled brats, evil tyrants and people who refuse to see the difference between the kunai and the scroll the kunai is in, my hobbies are training. Learning and creating new jutsu, training with my sword and gardening, my plans for the future are restoring my clan, becoming Hokage, reuniting with my mother, training the younger generation in the true ways of the shinobi, and to end the suffering of those all around the elemental nations, and even try to begin a new era of love and peace. Says Naruto, Anko and Yuga are in awe at his intro. Now that we introduced ourselves, we can do the actual exam. Said Anko, because the exam at the academy was a joke, so they can give the students a chance to become shinobi. Said Naruto, Anko laughs and Yugao giggles at that, when we are done with the exam, we can do our first mission, but we will not be doing D-rank missions I hate those. Said Yugao. Anko nodded in agreement, yeah, D-ranks are what the civilians should be doing, apparently they're too lazy to even do the stupid D-rank missions. Yugao and Anko grin at that, we are starting to like you kid, meet us at the training ground tomorrow to begin the exam. Said Anko, she and Yugao blow Naruto kisses before they leave. Naruto knows that Anko and Yugao are in love with him, and he also knows that Kurenai is in love with him, he goes home and gets a good night's sleep, in the morning he gets a cup of instant ramen and eats it, he then walks out to the training grounds where he sees Anko and Yugao, you two must really love me to want to wait here for a while for me. Said Naruto with a grin on his face, Anko and Yugao blush and say, yeah, and then Naruto walks up to them and does something that shocks them, he gives them both a kiss on the cheek. Anko and Yugao have major blushes on their faces, so, shall we do the exam Anko-chan and Yugao-chan? Both of them blush at the Chan part added to their names, they say, sure thing Naruto-kun, the timer stops at noon, so that means you need to get this bell from us. Says Yugao. Ready, begin. Said Anko, and they jump to the forest, Naruto spots Yugao with the bell, he jumps out, and Yugao then does me hand signs and Naruto notices this, and does hand signs of his own, fire style. Fireball Jutsu said Yugao, and breathes a ball of fire at Naruto who finishes his hand signs, water style. Water wall called Naruto. And Naruto makes a wall of water in front of him to block the fireball, and Yugao and Anko are shocked at how powerful the Jutsu was, and Anko did some hand signs and called out, fire style. Dragon Flame Jutsu and breathed it at Naruto, but Naruto then says Bakudo number 81. Danku and a rectangle shield appears in front of Naruto that blocks the Jutsu. Then he points his finger at Anko and says Bakudo number 61. Rikujikoro and six pillars of light slam into her waist, she grunts and falls to the ground, and Naruto then turns to Yugao and makes a triangle made of light and says Bakudo number 30. Shitatsu Sansen and the light slams into Yugao's arms and waist and pins her to a tree, and Naruto walks up to Yugao as she struggles to get free. Naruto then leans in towards Yugao making her blush and then gives her a kiss on the lips, and Yugao's eyes widen at this, and then they close, and she moans into it, as she is enjoying the kiss, Naruto reaches for the bell and he grabs it, then takes it and takes his lips off Yugao's and whispers into her ear, I got the bell Yugao-chan, that means I pass. Yugao had never been so happy in her life, cause she got a kiss from the guy of her dreams, Yugao is released from the keto, and her back slides down the trunk as she sighs with a dreamy look on her face. Naruto then walks up to Anko who was on the ground still trapped by his keto, Naruto puts a hand on her chin and has her look up at him, and he gives Anko a kiss on her lips, Anko is shocked at this, and she closes her eyes and moans into the kiss, cause she is enjoying the kiss, after she is freed from the keto, Naruto breaks the kiss and whispers what he whispered to Yugao, Anko was in heaven. Pause the same with Yugao, she has a dreamy look on her face, and Naruto walks to Ichiraku's, Anko and Yugao look at each other, and Anko says, best. Day. Ever. And Yugao agrees to that, and they go to the Hokage and tell him Naruto had passed very easily. After five weeks, Naruto is walking through the village minding his own business, when an Anbu appears and says, Yuzumaki-sama, the Hokage is requesting your presence. And Naruto turns to him and says, very well, and he flash steps to the Hokage's office, and Suratobi sees Naruto appear and asks, you wanted to see me Suratobi-sensei. Dot. Yes Naruto, it seems that Team 7 has sent me a message that the client had lied about the mission and why he did. Said Suratobi, would you like me to go on this mission as backup? Offered Naruto, Suratobi smiles and says that would be nice, would you like to take your senseis with you? Naruto says, they will be pleased to hear this. And Suratobi assigns Team 11 the mission that Team 7 is on requesting backup. Oh and by the way, the secret to paperwork is shadow clones. Naruto suddenly said to Suratobi, and Suratobi is shocked beyond belief and slaps his forehead for his own stupidity. Naruto is at the gates with Anko and Yugao, as they tell the guards that they are going on a mission assigned by the Hokage, and with that being done, they set off to the location of Team 7. 
And when they get to the wave village, they get to Tazuna's house and they were greeted by Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter. Well they came and Kakashi asks, so, the Sandame sent you three to be our backup. And Naruto notices the disgust in Kakashi's voice and answers that with a glare, yes, yes he did said Naruto, and Kakashi actually shivered at the glare. After everything was settled, the teams go out for training, and Naruto is in meditation state, while communicating with his aunt Bakudo and Hijoku, and Sasuke sees Naruto meditating and asks, why doesn't the dope train with us? And Anko says because he has complete control over his chakra. And Sakura decided to be an idiot and says, yeah right, I like to see him climb up a tree without using his hands. And Naruto stands up and walks up a tree like it's second nature, and Sasuke, Sakura and Sai are shocked at this. Does this answer your question? Ask Naruto calmly, and Sakura then asks, how, how did you do that without falling down the tree? And Naruto opens his eyes and looks at her, I conquered my chakra through meditation. He says, and then Sasuke says I demand you teach me how you did that dope. First off, you can't demand me of anything because I am a noble, secondly, you have no right to order me around, and lastly, that arrogant mouth of yours will be the death of you. Said Naruto, and Sakura gets mad, Naruto Baka, Sasuke-kun is the last of his clan, so it's important for him to get stronger. Naruto then says I am the last of the Uzumaki clan, and Hokage-sama made it clear that I would be treated like a noble, and you can't do anything about it, and not even the civilian council has a say in this either, because they are not supposed to be involved in shinobi matters at all. And Sakura then tries a different approach after she calms down, but Naruto. She tries to say, but Naruto finishes it by saying, I have spoken. Dot. After a couple weeks of training and guarding during the mission, Naruto notices Inari is glaring at them because he thinks that they will be killed by Gato. At dinner, Inari just sits there glaring at the shinobi, why do you even try, he will just kill you all. Said Inari, you think heroes don't exist, because they died against that man. Said Naruto calmly, heroes are not real, and they won't be as long as there is a tyrant like Gato running thing around here. Snarled Inari. That is where you are wrong, in order to become a hero, must sacrifice something if they are to be heroes. Said Naruto calmly, you'll never know what it's like to suffer, when a tyrant like Gato is milking this village clean, I bet you had everything and were treated like you were meant something. And with that being said, the temperature dropped instantly, and everyone looks at Naruto like he was about to go on a rampage. You think that you had a bad life, newsflash there will be someone else other than me to have life much much worse than yours, why don't you try living without a mother nor father to care for you, getting beaten almost to death in allies, munch on bad and posy in food, until the village leader says it's enough, and have people glare at you for something you're not. There is something you should know. I found out my mother was still alive 11 years ago, I thought she abandoned me, but the Hokage told me that she was forced to leave me to the mercy of the villagers, the masterminds who forced her to leave me were none other than the elder council and civilian council, all because they wanted a weapon for Kanoha to be unstoppable. But my grandfather figure made sure that turning me into a weapon didn't happen, and he couldn't do anything to keep my mother in the village, all because the civilian council ran their mouths at him that it needed to be done, and there is something I want everyone here to see said Naruto, and he lifts up his shirt and shows everyone the scars from the innocent villagers from Konoha, Tsunami cried with her hands covering her mouth, Tazuna crinched his fists in anger, Inari looked in horror, Anko and Yugao had their heads down in sadness, Kakashi showed nothing, but on the inside he was feeling guilty, Sakura had an urge to gag, Sasuke was indifferent. And even Sai was disgusted at the scars. As Naruto puts the shirt down, he says, there, that proves that someone else will have a life much worse than you. And he stands up and walks out, but before he goes out the door, he says, I apologize for showing my scarred torso to you all, but it needed to be done. And with that being said, he goes off to train some more. And Sakura asks, did Naruto have a life that badly, and was everything he said true? And Anko says sadly, yes, everything he said and everything that has happened to him was 100% true. And Yugao says, the shinobi council minus the Ichiha clan, have done their best to protect him, but were not always successful at it, that is why Naruto started training at age 5, so he would be able to defend himself. At this Sakura thinks has Naruto suffered that much, the glares that everyone were giving him, the rotten food that was fed to him, and something called fox hunts, I thought they were going to hunt a couple foxes. But the scars showed that I was wrong about the fox hunts they were calling them, now everything makes perfect sense, nobody should ever be treated like that, when I get the chance, I will tell Naruto that I'm sorry for the bullying I've done to him, that time when he gave me a cherry blossom, he was just trying to be nice, but my mom told me to stay away from him. Everything about Naruto being something they claim he is, was all a complete lie. And Sakura's eyes widen in shock, and then they fill up with tears, and she begins to cry, Naruto, I am so, so sorry, I am so sorry and ashamed at what I've done to you, I hope you can forgive me for everything. She thought in intense sadness. 
Naruto is walking in the forest looking for a perfect spot to train, when he hears a voice in his head like 11 years ago, Naruto. Naruto walks through the forest and comes across an ancient altar, and an ocarina was at the display altar, unknown to Naruto, someone followed him, the figure in the bushes was none other than Kashina Uzumaki, and she had finally found her son. And she was shocked at what he was wearing, and what he had found, Sachi, you found the burial grounds of Aizen Uzumaki, if you guys are wondering, the temple is put in as worship for Aizen Uzumaki, and the spot Naruto found is where he was buried. Dot. Naruto walks up to the altar and sees a tablet that says, the true descendant of Aizen Uzumaki, will find the burial ground of Aizen Uzumaki himself, the ocarina will give the wielder the power to heal others physically and mentally, bring back the dead, and to bring love and joy to those who hear it. And then, Naruto. Naruto looks around at the burial ground and says, I'm here, and the voice says take the ocarina from the display altar, and the spot you are on is where you be protected from intruders who want to kill you. Dot. Naruto looks down at the grounds and sees a ripple in the sand, and he slowly turns around to the altar, who are you? He asks as he turns to the altar and sees it glowing, and the voice says, I am, that I am. And Naruto looks confused and asks, I don't understand. And then the voice says, I am Aizen Uzumaki, your true ancestor. And Naruto is shocked and takes the ocarina from the display altar. What do you want with me? Naruto asked, as this was going on, Kishina was hearing everything and is shocked that Aizen Uzumaki is speaking to her son, while well, in the shadows the Soul Reapers are surprised at this, when Naruto walked into the tomb, they thought he was an intruder, but stopped when they heard Aizen Uzumaki's voice. I have seen and heard the cry of the Uzumaki clan, and your life, and I am furious with those fools who call themselves innocent civilians, the power the civilian and elder councils have gained over Kanoha corrupted them, transforming them into tyrants, they need to be stopped and be brought to justice, and the children that have bullied you for their own gains. And Naruto was shocked that the civilian and elder councils are evil. The ones who are ultimately responsible for the destruction of the Uzumaki clan are the Ichiha clan, the civilian council, the elder council, Danzo and his root Anbu, and Madara Ichiha. And at this, Naruto is shocked and enraged, and then asks, how is it that I wield all Keke Genkai that exist and don't exist anymore? That is because you are born from a powerful line of Uzumakis who have gained that power and use it to protect. Dot. Who are the Uzumakis who had that kind of power? Asked Naruto, and Aizen Uzumaki says, the names of the Uzumakis who gained that power are named Kauga Uzumaki, Kenshi Uzumaki, Kai Uzumaki, Ursa Uzumaki, and myself. And Naruto is shocked and asks, you are the fifth Uzumaki to gain that power and use it to protect. Yes, says Aizen. I know that evil will always surface, so I and the other four Uzumaki gods shall send you to bring the Uzumaki clan back to its former glory. And Naruto is surprised, me, but why am I to bring peace to this world, the people won't vouch for me they won't even listen. Says Naruto, I shall teach you what to do, in that time. And Naruto says, are you certain that I can do that, I'm sorry you must have chosen the wrong Uzumaki for this job. And the altar then glows even brighter that almost blinds everyone, and a force of wind pushes Naruto against a rock, and he clutches to it. Who made it possible to bring peace to the world in the past, who made it possible for the five Uzumaki that have all Keke Genkase to use the Zanpakuto and Hijoku you found, if you don't think you're worthy of being my successor, then go. And Naruto just sits right there panting from the force that appeared, and then the white light moves and embraces Naruto. Oh Naruto, when you go to Kanoha to bring justice to the village for the crimes and sins committed by the corrupted people in the village and defeat the world's evils, we the five Uzumaki gods shall always be with you until you yourself become a god, we shall now bless you with our power, even bless you with true immortality and our knowledge on what we know. Even what we know about and how to play the ocarina and all the treasure that we possess is now yours and yours only. And the white light then forms an angelic figure, and Naruto is staring at the figure in awe and shock, as he feels all this power and knowledge flow into him. As the light dies down and Naruto is lightly crying a tear from his eye because of the awe he was in, and he hears rustling in the bushes, he rubs the tear away and turns to the direction and says, show yourself. And a red-haired woman walks out and Naruto is shocked, and he hears her say, Sachi, and he says mother, and he then starts to run towards her, mother, mother he says happily, and they are near each other, mother Naruto says a teary-eyed Kishina and her son hugs her, my son, my son, and she returns the hug. I had prayed for this day to come, that we would be together again as a family, it's a miracle. Said Kishina while crying, and Naruto says with tears in his eyes yes mother, it is a miracle. My precious son, I missed you so much. Said Kishina in tears. Mom, I found the lost temple of Aizen Uzumaki, however the civilian and elder councils wanted to take the treasure that was there, because they wanted to use what was there to make Kanoha unstoppable, but Saratobi sensei made it clear that it can only be in our clan's possession. Kishina is shocked at what her son had said. 
So you found A's in Yuzumaki's sword in Hijoku, and you called the Sandame sensei. Says Kashina, yes, and he made the Yuzumaki clan a noble clan, so the civilians and shinobi who hate me because of Kurumi being inside of me don't kill me, he trained me in the ways of the shinobi, we discovered that I wield all the Kekei Genkai that exist and don't exist anymore. And I used the power of the Hajoku to make Suratobi sensei more confident against the civilian and elder council, and decreed that nobody should ever interfere, mess with, steal from, and start rumors about us that are not true will be brought to justice. Dot. Kashina is shocked that Saratobi made the Yuzumaki clan a noble clan, made the decree, and that her son possessed multiple bloodline limits, as well as use Hajoku to make Saratobi even stronger and more confident, and enraged that her son was hated and almost beaten to death instead of being seen as a hero. It is not Saratobi's fault for having you get beaten nearly to death, it's that civilian council, they want to make you suffer for the rest of your life, the shinobi council minus the Ichiha clan tried their best to protect you, but were not always successful. And Naruto understands this and says but Saratobi sensei saw that the power I possessed was so powerful, he knew he could never let Danzo, the elder council nor the civilian council, not even Orochimaru get their hands on me, so he did what no cage had ever done before, he made me, the Kaiubi Jinchuriki his right hand man. And decreed that if anyone tries to cause harm to me and anyone precious to me will be either executed or be thrown into the blood prison. Dot. Kashina was shocked beyond belief, she did not expect this, I told Saratobi sensei that Hijoku negates chakra loss, and it gave me the ability to use Riatsu and negated from running out, with that being said, Saratobi sensei made me the head of the Uzumaki clan. And Kashina says I'm guessing that Saratobi sent you on a mission. Dot. Yes, I was sent as backup because the bridge builder Tazuna lied about the mission Team 7 was on, and he had a good reason to do that, the tyrant Gato is cleaning the land of waves dry, and his grandson Inari claims that heroes don't exist, and I did a presentation about heroes. Said Naruto, what rank are you? Asked Kishina. Akibetsu Genin, but I am beyond cage level shinobi from what Siratobi sensei said. Said Naruto, and Kishina is shocked at this, who is your other sensei? She asked, and Naruto snickered and said, I have two senseis instead of one, they are Anko Midarashi and Yuga Yuzuki. And Kishina is surprised at this, one of my students are your senseis. Said Kishina, and Naruto smiles and says yup, and they along with Kurina Yuuhi, have a huge crush on me. And Kishina snickered. Then Naruto says I am in an arranged marriage with Kurinai's student, Hinata Hayuga, and Asuma's student, Ino Yamanaka, because I saved Hinata Haim from Kumo Shinobi, and protected Ino from bullies. And Kishina is surprised and asks how are you in an arranged marriage with two girls. And Naruto smirks and says because Saratobi sensei put me under the craw, which allows me to have more than one wife, however Saratobi sensei pulled a 180 on the civilian and elder councils by having me having the power to choose the female that I want to marry. Dot. Kishina smiles and hugs Naruto my little boys all grown up. She said in tears, and Naruto remembers something and says, Mom, I decided to wear these kind of clothes for the Yuzumaki clan, because it is a noble clan now, I made it clear that any member welcomed into the clan should wear dazzling white robes, with the orange whirlpool crest on the back, a windflower silk scarf. And a green kensuken, that means you will be wearing robes like these, and a green kensuken like this, and you can wear anywhere on your head, I am wearing two green kensukens. And Kishina is shocked that her son made it clear that the Yuzumaki clan members should wear robes like the ones Naruto is wearing. And so, Kishina and Naruto walk to Tazuna's house, and everyone is surprised at show they saw and Yugao calls out Kishina sensei, and she hugs her sensei, and Kishina returned the hug, and Naruto says this is Kishina Yuzumaki, my mother. And Kakashi then says Kishina-sama, and Kishina says with a glare at Kakashi, hello Kakashi, I see that you helped the civilians with the fox hunts to kill my son. And Kakashi was sweating like crazy. Sakura is confused at this and asks, what do you mean, was Kakashi sensei involved with those fox hunts? Asks Sakura, and Kishina says yes, he was involved in every fox hunt that had happened in the past. And Sakura is horrified, and Kishina then asks are you one of the graduating genin who bullied and beaten on my son? Dot. Sakura is now scared, because she is talking to Naruto's mother, she says while well scared, why 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 yes, and Naruto decides to go to bed and walks up the stairs, and nobody noticed him go upstairs except Izuna and Tsunami. Kishina then gets mad and asks why, why would you be mean to my son, even though he was just trying to be nice, and let me guess, it is because you are obsessed with Sasuke Chiha like a fangirl. And Sakura says with fear and sadness in her voice, it was because Sasuke-kun was the last of the Ichiha clan, and I thought that it was important for him to be the absolute strongest, so he could kill his brother for killing off the entire Ichiha clan. Dot. 
Bishina then says, Itachi had a good reason to kill off the Ichiha clan, and it was not because he felt like it, it was because the Ichiha clan were planning a coup and were going to take full control over Konoha and turn it into a village full of power-hungry freaks, and the elder and civilian council were on their side, and when the Hokage found out about it, they ordered Itachi to kill off the clan because not only was Itachi against the Ichiha clan's plan, but he wanted an Ichiha clan without corruption. Naruto was hearing every single word his mother was saying to Sakura and started to cry because he now feels guilty for what he did to Sakura, just like Sakura was feeling guilty for what she did to Naruto, he goes to bed and falls asleep. And as that happened a couple hours later, Sakura was standing in front of the room Naruto was sleeping in, and she looks down in sadness, and Kishina asks, are you sorry for what you did to him in the past? And Sakura says more sorry than I could ever imagine. And Kishina says I'm sure he will forgive you because I know he heard me talking to you about what you did to him, and he probably feels guilty for what he did to you. And Sakura is shocked at that, and then smiles and nods and quietly goes into Naruto's room and says Naruto but no answer, because Naruto is fast asleep. As the sun rises, Sakura had fallen asleep while waiting for Naruto to wake up, as she hears him starting to sit up, she is sitting on her knees as Naruto stretches from slumber, and he looks back and sees Sakura sitting there, unknown to them Kishina, Anko and Yugao are on the other side of the wall listening to the conversation, and Naruto turns away and looks down in sadness. Sakura understands this and begins to speak, Naruto, I know we had our differences in the past, but I just want you to know, I am so so sorry Naruto. Dot. Sakura starts to cry, I am so sorry and ashamed at what I did to you. Says Sakura and cries harder, I don't know if I can make up to you. And after she said that, Naruto then grabs her shirt when she says, but I, and has Sakura in a hug with tears falling from his eyes, how can you forgive me so easily, I thought you would be furious with me. She asks while crying as she returns the hug, and Naruto says I was never angry with you, I was sad, because I was afraid you would have lost your willpower and your confidence. And Sakura then says, I did lose my willpower and confidence. And has his hand on her shoulders and gently pushes Sakura as he says, but you found it again. And she looks at Naruto with tears running from her eyes. And you did it by yourself, and I'm so happy you realize your mistakes from the past. Says Naruto, and pulls her into another hug, it wasn't that hard Naruto, it took words from your mother to change my point of view about you. Said Sakura, as they begin to stop crying. After that Naruto and Sakura become friends, they begin to have training, and Kishina trains Naruto in Kenjutsu, alright Naruto, let's see how good you are at Kenjutsu. And Naruto says, very well and they clash with their swords, after 10 minutes of clashing, Kishina says, you're good my son, but let's see how good you are with one of your shikai from the Aizen Yuzumaki legend I heard when I was little. And Naruto smiles and says, alright, and he gets into position and chants extend, Hazukamaru, and the sword and hell transform into a spear. Kishina is surprised at this and says, well done Naruto, now let's see it in battle. And with that, they clash and then Naruto then chants break down, Hazukamaru and Hazukamaru breaks down into three pieces still connected to each other, that surprised Kishina, and with that being done, they continue to clash, and Kishina then says, now for the Bankai. And Naruto smirks and calls out Bankai, and then a tornado of power forms and swirls around Naruto, and as the smoke screen starts to clear Naruto then says Ryum and Hazukamaru and Kishina sees three new weapons. They were connected to each other by a chain, with melee weapons that look different and a huge axe-like weapon with a dragon on the blade, sitting on his shoulders. Kishina says alright, let's do this. And they begin to clash yet again, and then Naruto grabs the handle on the axe on his shoulders and starts to twirl it around like a tornado, and Kishina is shocked at this type of battle style. Naruto then says at long last, Hazukamaru has awakened from his slumber, and this next attack will decide the winner, even though this is a training session. Dot. And then, Hazukamaru gets to full power, and then Kishina and Naruto go for the final blow, and Naruto had won, the Predator is back, at the top of the food chain. And after his Bankai goes back to sealed form, Sasuke walks right up to Naruto and says, hand over your weapon dope, I bet I can use it more properly. Dot. Naruto sighs in annoyance, and says, have you forgotten, you can't do nor demand anything from the Yuzumaki clan. And Sasuke smirks and says, then the civilian council will have to get you to hand it over then. Naruto just says that is where you are wrong. And why is that? Ask the arrogant Sasuke, not even the civilian council can do nor demand anything from the Yuzumaki clan, the Hokage made that law clear. And Sasuke walks off. What was that all about? Ask Kishina, and Naruto says, after the Ichiha massacre, Sasuke has become power hungry and wants nothing but power, and he will try to get his hands on super strong tools and weapons that don't belong to him, so he can kill Itachi. 
and Kishina is angry at this, and Naruto tells her that neither the Ichiha nor the civilian council can do nor demand anything about, and from the Uzumaki clan, that Sirotobi made it clear as a law, and Kishina is very happy about that. The day was the day for battle, and Naruto tells Kishina, Anko and Yugao that he will be staying behind to protect Tsunami and Inari, just in case Gato's men come to Tazuna's home, he told Tazuna this as well, and Tazuna is grateful for that. As Team 7 leaves for the bridge, the hired henchmen of Gato come to Tazuna's house as Naruto suspected, the thugs take Tsunami hostage, and Inari runs at them, and the thugs grab their sword handles, and they slash at Inari, while Tsunami screams at the thugs to stop. However, Naruto flash-stepped Inari out of harm's way and swings his Zanpakuto to strike them down, with the thugs defeated Inari and Tsunami were safe, after Naruto saves Inari and Tsunami from Gato's thugs he goes to the bridge to join the battle. At the bridge, Team 7, Anko and Yugao, Kishina is hiding under the bridge until her son arrives, are not going well, Zabuza and Haku are stronger than they thought. Sasuke is fighting Haku, but Sasuke was so arrogant that he is backed into a corner because of Haku's Kekei Jinkai, the ice-style jutsu, at this rate, I'm gonna have to use the Sharingan. Thought Sasuke, and Haku then makes a hand sign, secret jutsu. Crystal ice mirrors and mirrors of ice form around Sasuke like a dome. Sasuke is now trapped, and if he doesn't escape it, he was surely going to die. This won't stop me, I am an Achiha, an elite says Sasuke with an arrogant smirk on his face, and Haku then says, your arrogance misguides you from getting stronger, but then again the Achiha clan is a clan of arrogant people. Sasuke gets mad and barks how dare you insult the Achiha clan. And another voice from the mist says, she dares just fine, you foolish boy. Dot Sasuke knows that voice and says so you're just jealous of the Achiha clan as well aren't you dope? Nope, I'm not jealous of the Achiha clan, I despise the Achiha clan. Said Naruto. And what makes you hate the Achiha clan? asks Sasuke, and Naruto says because, the Achiha clan nearly wiped out my clan, and what I might add, the civilian and elder councils tried to finish the job. And everyone is shocked even Haku. The Achiha clan is nothing but a clan of jutsu thieves, and they care about nobody but themselves, Itachi Achiha is the only Achiha who I will not kill, because he is the only Achiha who protected me. Naruto finishes, and he turns to the masked ninja, who are you? asks Naruto, I'm Haku Yuki, the last of the Yuki clan, what's yours? said Haku. I am Naruto Uzumaki, the last and head of the Uzumaki clan. And Haku is surprised at the name. I offer you protection from those who want to destroy all who possess a Kekei Genkai. And Haku asks, and how would I know that you won't kill me? Because in Uzumaki, never breaks a promise. Naruto said with a sincere smile on his face, and Haku blushes at the smile, I accept your offer. Says Haku, excellent says Naruto. And Naruto hears lightning crackle and turns to see Kakashi about to go for the kill on Zabuza, and Naruto curses and points his finger at Kakashi, as Kakashi starts to run towards Zabuza. Naruto chants Bakudo number 61. Rikujikoro and six beams of light slam into Kakashi's waist, and he falls to the ground. Naruto, what are you doing? Asked Kakashi, and Naruto asks Zabuza, would you like protection from the Uzumaki clan Zabuza Mamachi? Zabuza is shocked at the offer, he about the offer, and then asks will I be able to protect Haku. Naruto smiles and says of course, you will always be able to protect her, she will be protected by the Uzumaki clan, and you will be able to protect her. Said Naruto. Zabuza is now happy and then says, then I accept the offer. Dot. You will be protected from all threats that come towards you and Haku. Thank you thank Zabuza, you're welcome said Zabuza, Kishina appears and says well done, my son. She says, and then clapping is heard, well, well, well. I guess Abusa can't get the job done, now that we are all here, kill them all, but leave the women, I can use some entertainment. Said Gato unaware that he just signed his own death warrant. Then a massive killing intent is felt from Naruto, he was so angry that this tyrant was going to use females as playthings. You just dug your own grave, prepare yourself leprechaun, cause your pathetic life shall end swiftly. Naruto said dangerously, and Naruto takes his Zanpakuto out, holds it upside down, and then lets go of the handle, the blade falls through the ground, and two rows of giant blades appear behind Naruto, Bankai. Zanbanza Kurakage Ashi and the blades break down into flower petals which are actually blades themselves, and sends the cherry blossom blades at Gato and his thugs, the petal blades slice through every part of their bodies, killing all the thugs and Gato instantly. While this was happening, everyone who was seeing this was in awe and fear, except Sasuke was staring at the sword with a greedy look on his face, that law the sand aim activated won't stop me, that power will be mine. He thought, however he is so dense because he has no idea that the sand aim is more stronger and more confident even right now. 
Then Naruto says you can try it Ichiha, but you forget that the Uzumaki clan cannot be messed with, the members of the elder and civilian council must obey the rule of the Hokage whenever they like it or not, not even the Anbu can get involved with the Uzumaki clan, and Sasuke is scared because Naruto knew what he was thinking. It was now time to leave the wave country, and Inari is sad that Naruto is leaving. Oh, don't weep Inari, we'll visit when I have the time, okay. Ask Naruto, and Inari who is crying nods in understanding, Naruto smiles and ruffles Inari's hair. Naruto, his sensei and mother, along with Team 7, what are we gonna name the bridge, cause I'm thinking of the awesome Tazuna bridge. Said Tazuna, and then Inari says, nope, how about the great Naruto bridge. And Tsunami says with a giggle that's a good name. Dot. As the gang is walking towards Konoha, Sasuke is making plans to get Naruto's sword, unfortunately for him Naruto is gonna tell Sirotobi, and when they get to Konoha gates the two guards, they are in shock, Kishina-sama they say, and Kishina smiles sweetly to them, hello to you two, Katetsu and Izumo, I thank you two for trying your best on protecting my son. She says, and Katetsu says, of course, if our sensei is you Kishina-sama, then your son is a friend of ours. Dot as the gang get to Sirotobi's office, they go in and they see no stacks of paperwork on Hiruzen's desk, while Hiruzen is relaxing at his desk. Okajsama asks Kakashi, and Hiruzen turns to them and asks is the mission a success? And Kakashi says it is done, and they tell the Hokage what had happened on the mission, Sirotobi is now surprised to see that Kashina is in the office. Hello Kashina, how have you been, I bet Naruto found you. Says Sirotobi. Kashina asks can me and Naruto speak to you in private Hiruzen, it's important. And Sirotobi says with a smile certainly and Team 7 along with Anko and Yuga walk out, then Sirotobi performs a silencing seal on the exterior room, so no one can hear what they're about to talk about. Now, what is it you two want to talk about? Asks Sirotobi. Sirotobi sensei, I found the burial grounds of Aizen Yuzumaki himself. And now Sirotobi is shocked and asks do you got proof? And Naruto shows Sirotobi the ocarina. Sarutobi is now beyond shocked, and he says the Ocarina of the Gods and Kashina is shocked at this, while well, Naruto is confused, the what? He asked, and Sarutobi explains the Ocarina of the Gods is a musical instrument that plays a melody so beautiful it can heal anybody physically and mentally, bring back the dead, and brings love and joy to everyone who hears the sweet melody. Dot. Naruto is surprised at this info, legend has it that this Ocarina was blessed by the gods themselves. And Naruto is very surprised at this, however, the Ichiha clan discovered it and tried to steal it from the Uzumaki clan for their own power, the Ocarina of the Gods is supposed to be used by the Uzumaki clan, for those who want their suffering to end. Dot. This will be the sacred relic of the Uzumaki clan, this will be used as a way to give thanks to the gods who gave us life. Kishina and Sarutobi smile at this, Naruto tells Sarutobi that Sasuke tried to get his sword and power by demanding it. Sarutobi smirks and says let him try, my word is law, and if he has a problem with that, then he can leave the village. Oh, and Sarutobi sensei, can you enlist Zabuza Mamachi and Hakuyuki as Konoha Shinobi? Ask Naruto, and Hiruzen says of course, Zabuza will be an excellent jonin, and Haku will be joining your team as a genin. Naruto is happy at this, and as they finish talking, Naruto and Kishina go to Naruto's new home Uzumaki Manor, after Naruto tells Abusa and Haku that the two are enlisted as Konoha Shinobi, he tells Abusa that his rank is Jonin, and that Haku will be joining his Genin team, and both are pleased at this. Kishina follows Naruto to the cellar of Uzumaki Namaka's manor, and there Naruto activates his Rinnegan and chance creation of all things, and a new room in the cellar is made, and Naruto named this room the Kamigami no Basho, that means place of the gods and Kishina and Naruto walk in the room. And it is empty and Naruto chants again creation of all things, and an altar with the statues that look like the Uzumaki gods, and then banners with the Uzumaki clan crest appear on the walls, three banners on the side walls, two banners beside the door with a smaller banner above the door. Naruto walks up to the altar and puts the ocarina on the display which is on the altar, and then the light shines down from the heavens onto the ocarina. Naruto then gets on one knee and waves his hand, and a stone tablet appears at the base of the altar that says the gods gave us life, and we should be thankful for them, we shall grace the sacred relic that the gods gave the Uzumaki clan, as thanks for breath they give, may the Uzumaki gods watch over the clan. May the ocarina of the gods grace the Uzumaki clan until the stars rain down from the heavens. And Kishina smiles and says you're going to make a great clan leader. Dot. Naruto smiles and says thank you mother. And Kishina hugs him which he happily returns, while they are in their embrace they hear a voice we thank you Naruto, we now know that you will succeed the Uzumaki clan, and by the way, how kind of you to use the ocarina of the gods as a sacred relic for the Uzumaki clan, and very kind of you to use it as a way of giving thanks to the gods. 
We the gods shall bless the Uzumaki clan as the divine clan, we shall always watch over and protect you, we give you this as a thank you gift for doing this, with this amulet, you pray to us for protection and guidance in tough situations, take care young one. And the amulet appears, it floats towards Naruto and puts itself around Naruto's neck, giving him knowledge of ancient chants and prayers. Naruto then walks out to the training ground, and he sees his senseis waiting for him, Naruto-kun, we wanted to tell you that we have nominated you for the Chunin exams. And Naruto is a little surprised at this, Naruto says I am honored to participate in the Chunin exams. Anko and Yuga both kiss him on both cheeks and tell him good luck. The day is the day of the Chunin exams, and Naruto sees Konohamaru running for his life from Sakura, Naruto sighs and flash steps in between the two, Naruto turns to Sakura and asks, Sakura, why are chasing Konohamaru, I assume you must have a reason. And Sakura looks away from his gaze and says, because he said I had a big forehead. And he just sighs and says Sakura, don't let it get to you, Konohamaru doesn't know better, now just calm down and think before you act next time. And Sakura says alright, I'll try, and Naruto smiles a little and says, at least you'll try. Dot. As this is going on, Konohamaru tries to make a run for it and bumps into someone, ow exclaimed Konohamaru, and finds himself being picked up by the shirt. That hurt you little runt, I guess I'll have to teach you some manners. Says the boy in black, and a blonde girl says cut it out, we'll get in trouble. And Naruto says you should listen to your female companion. And they see him and the blonde blushes at the sight at Naruto, wow, what a hottie. That is Konohamaru Suratobi, grandson of the Sandame Hokage, if you harm him, then the Hokage will consider your entry disqualified, either that or your red-haired comrade will knock some sense into you. Said Naruto smoothly, and the two are shocked and surprised, shocked about harming the third Hokage's grandson would disqualify them, surprised that he sensed their comrade's presence. And the red-haired boy jumps down from the tree and turns to his male companion, Kankuro, you embarrass the sand village. Said the redhead, but... The now named Kankuro tries to explain, shut up, or I'll kill you. Threaten the redhead. Naruto gets curious and asks excuse me, what are all three of your names? They turn to Naruto and they introduce themselves I'm Kankuro, the puppet master. Said the man in black, I'm Tamari, the wind mistress. Said the blushing blonde, my name is Gara of the desert, what is your name? Asked Gara, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, the last and head of the Uzumaki clan, also Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. The three of them are surprised at this. The reason I revealed my status as a Jinchuriki is because I can see that Gara hasn't slept in years, my guess is that he has Shukaku the Sand Spirit. Said Naruto, when and how? Asked Gara, Kurumi-chan or to you Kaiubi told me. Answered Naruto, I hope we face each other in the exams Kaiubi Jinchuriki. Said Gara, I have that to look forward to. Said Naruto with a small smile. Why did you say you have it to look forward to? Asked an overreacting Sakura, and Naruto calmly says because, maybe he can give me a good challenge. And Sakura looks at him like he's crazy. Naruto and Haku are heading towards the academy for the Chuinan exams, during the days, Naruto and Haku got to know each other and began to get closer each day, Haku started to fall in love with him as Naruto developed feelings for her. Naruto told Haku that he is under Kra, which means he can take more than one bride, but Naruto is the one who picks the brides, Haku herself is happy about this because she is hoping that Naruto would pick her as one of his wives. As they are heading to their assigned room, they notice a crowd and a kid with a soup bowl haircut is trying to get in, and two people were in the way, and Naruto sighs to himself, Kitetsu, Izumo is this your way of testing them? He thought, and Naruto walks over and whispers to the kid who was trying to get in. And he asks but, how do you know it is a Jinjutsu? And now everyone even the boy's teammates are curious, you with the pale eyes, look at it closely, says Naruto the pale-eyed boy looks closely, and sees the room number change, he's right he says. And the disguised Kitetsu charges Naruto and the boy blocks it. No one needs to fight, especially before the exams. He says, well put choice of words. Said Naruto, and a girl with panda bear ears hairstyle walks up to her teammate with her other teammate, Lee, what are you doing, we promise to not show our true power. She exclaimed, and the now named Lee looks down in shame, sorry Tenten he apologized, and the pale-eyed boy asks, what are your names you two? Dot. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, the last and head of the Uzumaki clan. Said Naruto and everyone is surprised at the clan name, and they all have the same thought how, I thought they were all wiped out. And Haku introduces herself, I am Haku Yuki, the last of the Yuki clan. And everyone is shocked at this we thought the Yuki clan was wiped out along with the Kagaya clan, during the Kekei Genkai rebellion in the Mist village. And the pale-eyed boy says, I am Niji Hayuga, and Naruto hears Hayuga and asks do you hold any relation to Hinata Hayuga? Dot. Niji smiles and says yes, I am her cousin. And Naruto is glad that his girlfriend Hinata had some relatives, and he turns to the panda ear-haired girl, I'm Tenten she says with a blush, and the boy calls out Yash, I am Rock Lee, the second green beast of Konoha. 
And Naruto says I notice that Lee has no chakra coils, so that means that Lee has no ninjutsu nor jinjutsu skills at all. And Lee looks down in embarrassment and says, yeah, everyone says I won't be a great ninja without ninjutsu nor jinjutsu. And Naruto gets an idea and says Lee, what if I told that there is a way to gain the ability to use ninjutsu and jinjutsu and be able to use it whenever you like, and I offer you the ability to use a new type of energy called Riatsu or spirit energy. And Lee has a look of hope and asks you can grant me that ability. Dot. Naruto smiles at Lee and says yes, I will grant you that power, and I also offer Niji Hayuga to permanently be free of his burden. And Niji is shocked that Naruto said that and asks you can remove the cage bird seal. And Naruto says yes and they go to the room with a lot of older looking genin, while Sasuke and his team are left in the dust, I apologize for not giving team 7 a lot of showtime, I will try and have Sasuke and the rest of the rookie 9 get some showtime. Dot. Naruto tells Lee to get on his knee, and with that, Naruto puts his pointer and middle fingers onto Lee's forehead, and Naruto uses the power of the Hejoku to give Lee the ability to use ninjutsu, jinjutsu and the ability to use riatsu. Naruto then asks Niji to take off his headband, and Niji does us and Naruto uses the power of the Hijoku again to get rid of the cage bird seal on Niji's forehead, and with that done Naruto says they're all done, Lee you can now use ninjutsu, jinjutsu and riatsu, I also gave you an extra power, so be careful when you're around intense battles, and I will be teaching you how to control this power. Niji the cage bird seal is gone for good. And now Lee and Niji are happy about this. Niji is free from the cage bird seal, and Lee can use ninjutsu, jinjutsu and riatsu. Lee then asks Naruto-kun, what is the extra power you spoke about? And Naruto says, the extra power I gave you is something special, you have the powers of a hollow. And he explains what hollows are and Lee is determined to control the power, and then Naruto says, when you have full control of your inner hollow, then you will gain the powers of an aranker. Dot. What's an aranker? Ask Niji, and Naruto says an Aranker is a hollow trying to gain the powers of a soul reaper by removing its mask. And Lee is now even more determined to have full control of the power, and then Naruto hears hey, Naruto I see you're making new friends. Said Kiba, and Hinata says hi Naruto Kundat. Naruto smiles and says hello Hinata Haim and Hinata blushes at the Haim part, Niji noticed the Haim part added to Hinata's name, and says if you hurt Hinata-sama, I will cripple you very badly. And Naruto says don't worry Niji-san, I will take good care of Hinata Haim. And Niji smiles and says good and he and his team walk off. And Naruto turns to the members of Team 8, Kiba Inuzuka, Hinata Hayuga and Shino Aburam, it's been a while hasn't it? Says Naruto. And then Ino hugs Naruto from behind while saying Naruto-kun, I missed you. And Naruto says with a smile on his face, I missed you to Ino Haim. And Ino blushed at the Haim part added to her name, Troublesome Redhead. And Naruto releases some killing intent and says calmly I didn't hear Shikamaru, what was that you said about troublesome redheads? And Shikamaru is sweating like crazy and says uh. And then no noth nothing Naruto. And Naruto smiles and says that's what I thought. And Ino asks you have got to teach me how to do that Naruto-kun. Dot. When we have some alone time I can teach you the smile that promises death. And as the rest of the Rukunai show up, they start talking, and then Kiba starts to boast about beating everyone in the room until, can you keep it down, some people have sensitive ears, my name is Kabuto Yakushi. Said a grey-haired boy. We meet our young genin at the Chuanin exams, Naruto and his fellow shinobi behind him come across Kabuto Yakushi. Hi, I'm Kabuto Yakushi, are you taking the Chuanin exams too? And then Naruto asks, is this your first time Kabuto? Actually, it's my seventh time says Kabuto, and Kiba says, you must be weak to take the Chuanin exams that many times. And Naruto flicks Kiba on the nose. Ao Kiba yelps in pain and rubs his nose oi, what was that for Naruto? Ask Kiba while he holds his nose, you need to know that you must never underestimate a ninja, and that you should be more on judging people, based on their appearance. Says Naruto, and Haku smiles, and she says well said Naruto-kun. And Kabuto says if you guys want to, I can give you info on some of the shinobi here. And takes out some orange cards with my ninja info cards. He says, and Sakura asks what are those. And Kabuto then says I'll show you, you see these cards are special, and you need to focus your chakra into the cards to make the images appear. Dot. Kabuto then asks anyone in particular that you wish to know about. And Sasuke says I would like info on Rock Lee of the Leaf, Gear of the Sand, and Kabuto pulls out four cards and says here they are, and Sasuke says show me, and Kabuto begins first we have Rock Lee, he's done 50 D rank missions and 29 C rank missions, his teammates are Niji Hayuga and Tenten, it also says that he had no skill at ninjutsu nor jinjutsu. However a student of the third Hokage, granted Lee the ability to use ninjutsu and jinjutsu, along with a very special power called Riatsu. And the rookie nine are surprised at this. 
The Budo continues next, we gear of the desert, 20 D ranks, 12 C ranks, and dot get this 1 B rank as a genin, there is not a lot of intel on this guy, except for the part that, he survived every mission without getting a single scratch. This really gets Naruto's attention. Now we have Naruto Uzumaki, he is currently the last and head of the Uzumaki clan, no D ranks and 50 C ranks, get this 37 B ranks, 49 A ranks and 72 S ranks as a genin, you see Naruto Uzumaki nearly did all these missions single-handedly, and 75% of the cells at the blood prison are filled thanks to him. He also wants to get the Nidame Hokage's sword the Rage and out of Aoi Rakusho's hands and back into his family's possession, the seven swordsmen of the Mist Village see him worthy as a swordsman, and they decided that when they die, they will give the swords of the Mist to Naruto to protect and find other Mist Ninja, who he deems worthy to be a member of the seven swordsmen. It also says that Naruto Uzumaki wields an unusual power, a power that allows him to be as strong as the gods themselves, and here is the real kicker, just like Gara, he survived every mission without getting a single injury, and nobody has never ever defeated him, and with that reputation being said, everyone in every village calls him Kanoha's Angel of Death and Naruto the Invincible. Said Kabuto in shock, and everyone is now looking at Naruto in shock and fear. Okajama gave me missions that needed to be dealt with because those missions were bothering him, he also sent me to other hidden villages minus the sound village to assist in their problems and missions. Said Naruto calmly. The Budo gets the last ninja info card out and shows it, lastly, Hakuyuki, the last of the Yuki clan, there is no other intel on her, except the fact that she is Naruto's teammate in the Chunin exams. And then Kabuto gets another blank card out, and it shows a map, leaf, rain, sand, grass, mist, cloud, stone, waterfall and sound, no one knows the true reasons for the exams changing locations every year, and the sound village, they are a new village, so no one knows a lot about them, they are always very mysterious. Said Kabuto. And three sound ninja come up and the one with a weird looking gauntlet swings a punch at Kabuto, while says why don't you add this to your cards of information. And Kabuto dodges the punch and then feels sick to his stomach and then vomits, Kabuto said Sakura with concern, what did you do to him? She asked, and the sound ninja turns to her and says, you should know what happened, he did dodge the punch, but he couldn't dodge something else, can you guess what it is? And Naruto says because of your sound waves. And the boy says give the redhead a prize, yes sound waves they are detected by the ears, and you can't do a thing about it. And while this is going on, there are some females who have their eyes on Naruto, that is a smart and handsome hunk of a man. One of them thought. These females are Yujito, Kari, Samui, Fu, Karen, Kuritsuchi and Gurin, even Kin has a blush on her face when she looks at Naruto, that long red-haired boy is a real looker. She thought. Then a scary and scarred man appear in the room and says there will not be any fighting in the room until you are all in the forest of death, am I clear? He asks, and Naruto says crystal clear sir. The man smiles and says I am Ibiki Marino, and I will be your first proctor, and we will be starting with a written test. And everyone follows Ibiki into a room and they sit at a desk and they are waiting for the test to begin. Ibiki says alright, you will all have a time period and you will stop when I say pencils down. And Naruto is looking at his test and smirks and thinks too easy and Ibiki says start and as Naruto starts, he finishes in one second and puts his pencil down and every proctor and shocked at this and they think he finished in one second, he's broken the record in completing the written exam. Looks like we found a true prodigy. And Haku finishes right after Naruto, and the proctors are even more shocked. Team 11 is the first ever team to complete the written exam the fastest. They thought. As the rest of the teams were either disqualified or forfeited, and Ibiki says pencils down. And everyone who is still working on their test put their pencils down, now, we will begin with the 10th and final question, and this one will make you all break. Says Ibiki, and everyone is curious about it so Ibiki explains the 10th question, and some of the teams forfeit. Then Naruto says only those who try to break someone else's dreams is disgraceful to my eyes, any shinobi who doesn't fear their own strength, or the strength of their enemies, is not human at all, being a shinobi is about having the guts to never give up, if you got a problem with that, then get out of here. And Naruto's words boost up everybody's confidence and they agree with him. Ibiki is surprised at this, and then smiles and says congratulations, you all pass. And everybody is shocked, and then Zabuza appears and says alright, tomorrow I want all of you to meet me at the entrance of the forest of death at noon. And everyone gets up and leaves the room to prepare for tomorrow. Meanwhile when Ibiki is collecting the test papers, as he picks up Naruto's test paper, and is surprised at the test, I can't believe it, that long red-haired kid completed his test in one second, and now he has a perfect score along with his teammate Hakuyuki, well the Chuanin exams have gotten more interesting. He said to himself with a smile. After that, it was time for the second part of the Chuanin exams, and they see Zabuza at the entrance, and he smiles dangerously and says welcome to the forest of death, I hope you came prepared. 
and everyone except Naruto and Haku shiver at Zabuza's warning, and then Zabuza explains what they need to do, and they get a scroll, Naruto and Haku get a heaven scroll. And Zabuza then gets everyone ready, are you all ready? He asks, everyone nods and Zabuza says then, go and they charge into the forest of death, Naruto and Haku are searching and find a group, and they come face to face, while in different parts in the bushes, the female shinobi who had crushes on him are watching, the female shinobi are Karen, Gurin, Yujito, Kari, Samui. Fu and Kuritsuchi are watching this, and they have blushes, well looky here, we found Kanoha's team 11 first, we are looking for a heaven scroll. And Naruto says you mean this. And he holds up the heaven scroll, and the other team are delighted with this, we just got lucky, they have the scroll we need to get. And they charge at Naruto and Haku. The female shinobi in the bushes are worried about the red-haired boy, and then Naruto holds out one hand and chants Hato number 91. Senju Koten Taiho and fires 10 red spears of light at the enemy team, and they dodge and go through hand signs earth style. Earth spear and a spear of rock is coming at Naruto, and then Naruto says lightning style. Lightning strike and a bolt of lightning strikes the spear and it explodes, everyone is shocked that Naruto can use lightning style jutsu, and then Naruto does some hand signs and then lava style. Magma storm, and the sky turns red and fireballs rain down from the heavens, Kuritsuchi is shocked that Naruto knows the lava style jutsu. Everyone in the bushes watching the battle was in awe at Naruto's power, noticing that the enemy ninja dodged again, he goes through another sequence of hand sign storm style. White lightning bolt jutsu and white lightning descends from the heavens and strikes the enemy ninja, and the enemy ninja are on the ground defeated. How, I thought. I would dodge. That jutsu? He asked, you see, lightning flashes in one one thousandth of a second, it's faster than sound, if you want to be a great ninja, then you need to be fully aware of your surroundings and your opponent's abilities, along with their advantages and disadvantages. And everyone listened to Naruto and were in a trance of taking in the words Naruto had said. The enemy ninja says, I thank you for telling us that, and take our scroll and go to the tower. And Naruto says you are welcome, what are your names stone ninja? And the shinobi says Kazuko Yamamoto, and those are my teammates Kyoko Makamori and Osama Mizushima, what is your name? And Naruto smiles then says, I am Naruto Uzumaki, the last and head of the Uzumaki clan, and this is my teammate Hakuyuki, the last of the Yuki clan. And the three stone shinobi are shocked at the clan name. You are the son of the Yandame Hokage. Said Kazuko, and Naruto says I am, your father is the man who single-handedly ended the third great ninja war, and the stone considered him an enemy. Kazuko says. And everyone is beyond shocked, Kuritsuchi is the most shocked, this young Yuzumaki is the son of the fourth Hokage. That may be so, but the Sandame Hokage sent me on missions to help out the other villages who have problems they want to be rid of, after I got rid of their problems, all of the hidden villages branded me as their ally, I told them all about my past, and they are angry about it. I was shocked that the stone village said that refusing to fulfill a cage's dying wish is disgraceful, but they were more angry for the fact that it was the fourth Hokage's son being treated like a piece of garbage. Said Naruto. I hope we meet again, Naruto Uzumaki. Said Osamu, and Naruto says yes, we will meet again one day when you three become better shinobi, now some advice, the true path for gaining power comes from the will of protect what is most precious to you, do you understand? And the stone shinobi nod in acknowledgement. Naruto walks away towards the tower with Haku behind him, and then they feel a powerful chakra signature coming from their right, that has to be Sasuke, and my guess is that Orochimaru gave him the curse mark, let's go check it out Haku. Said Naruto and Haku nods, and they go check out what is happening. As Naruto suspected, Sasuke had the curse mark. Naruto and Haku see Sasuke going to kill the black-haired girl from the Sound Village, who is the only member of her team that is still alive, Naruto then flash steps in between Sasuke and the girl. Out of the way dope, I will use the power he gave me to defeat everyone who stand in my way. Snarl the corrupted Sasuke as he charges towards Naruto. Bakudo number 63. Seijo Sabaku, chants Naruto. Sasuke gets wrapped up in chains that appear from Naruto's hand, and he gets pulled down. Everyone feels Naruto's godlike power, and the girl thinks in her head what is this power. That curse mark has made you even more corrupted. Says Naruto, release me, I am an Achiha, an elite. Snarled Sasuke, and Naruto hits the back of Sasuke's neck, and the curse mark quickly fades. Are you alright young one? Naruto asks the girl, and she blushes at the looks of this man, and says I'm fine, thank you. And Naruto asks what's your name? And the girl says my name is Kin. And Naruto says I am Naruto Uzumaki, the last and head of the Uzumaki clan. Dot Kin is in shock, I thought that clan was wiped out. She thought, and he says the Uzumaki clan was never wiped out, close to extinction yes, but no, they went into hiding, there are very few Uzumakis left in the elemental nations, only four are left, I am calling myself the last of the clan, so I can restore it to its former glory. 
Dot if you're tired of being treated like a lowlife, then come live in Kanoha at Uzumaki Manor. Naruto offered. Hin is surprised at this would I be protected from people like Orochimaru? She asks, and Naruto smiles and Kin blushes at the smile he is giving, yes, you will be protected by anybody of that skill. Said Naruto. Hin begins to cry tears of joy and hugs Naruto, and says thank you to him repeatedly, Naruto smiles and hugs back and picks her up bridal style, which makes Kin blush, he turns to Haku and says Haku, let's get to the tower and finish this up. And she nods and they disappear into the woods, back with the other rookies. Naruto is so powerful said Choji, what a drag, he never ceases to amaze us. Said Shikamaru, Naruto-kun is so strong and very fast. Said a blushing Hinata, I agree Hinata said Ino with a dreamy look in her eyes. Back with Team 11, they get to the tower and they open the scrolls, and they begin to smoke, they get surprised by this, and Naruto says this is a summoning jutsu, get rid of the scrolls. And they throw the two scrolls to the ground, and out of the smoke came Kashina and she is happy. Mom, you're a proctor for the Chunin exams. Ask Naruto in shock, and Kashina says yes Naruto, I am a proctor for the Chunin exams, I wanted to see you fight in the exams. And she sees Kin and asks Naruto, who is that girl? And Naruto says her name is Kin, and I saved her from getting killed by Sasuke, and offered her a place and protection in Uzumaki Manor, from that snake Orochimaru. Dot. Kashina smiles and says good thinking Naruto. And Naruto then says when me and Haku saved Kin from Sasuke, he was powered by the curse mark. And Kashina's eyes widen and she says you need to tell Sirotobi about this. And Naruto says that's exactly what I was thinking, I'll go tell him right away. And with that being said, Naruto flash steps to Sirotobi. Naruto-kun, is there a problem? Asks Sirotobi, and Naruto says yes Sirotobi-sensei, Sasuke Chiha has gained the curse mark, my guess is that Orochimaru is in the Chunin exams. Dot Sirotobi's eyes widen and says so he wants the Sharingan, and he wants to use the Chunin exams to get Sasuke Chiha. I'm afraid so said Naruto, and Sirotobi says thank you for bringing this to my attention Naruto-kun. You're welcome, also I saved a member of the team from the Sound Village, Sasuke was going to kill her after he killed her other teammates, I offered her protection and a place to live at Uzumaki Manor. Said Naruto. Excellent, now I want you to wait for the teams that come to take the empty spots. Sarutobi orders, and Naruto says as you wish. Naruto goes to his team, and they wait for the empty spots for the teams to take, and when team 7 through 10 and even the team from the Stone Village get to the tower last, Naruto smiles and says now the final part of the exams can begin. And he along with the rest of the teams that made it get ready for the final part of the exams. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.